Imagine you flip a coin and it's a normal fair coin. So 50% of the time you'll see heads, 50% of the times you'll see tails. And you flip this coin recording the number of flips until you hit the sequence heads and tails. You can imagine such a thing. Now imagine doing this process a hundred times, a thousand times, each time recording the number of flips until you see heads and tails. Average all this data, what we'll call that number, the average number of flips until heads and tails, okay? You can imagine doing something similar as well, where you flip the coin until you see the sequence heads, then heads. And you can imagine tallying data and then taking an average to look at the average number of flips until you see heads and heads. In this video, we want to investigate these numbers, these averages. And in particular, figure out the answer to the question, how do these numbers compare? That is to say, if you look at the average number of flips to, until heads and tails, and you look at the average number of flips until heads and heads, how do these two numbers compare to one another? Are they going to be roughly equal to one another? Uh, is one going to be larger than the other? I think intuitively most people believe, from what I've, I've sort of asked around, it seems like the intuition of most people is that these numbers are going to be roughly the same. The rationale being something along the lines of, well, heads and heads has the same probability of coming up as heads and tails. So shouldn't the average number of flips till we see these sequences be the same? Well, that's the intuitive answer. But I'm here to tell you that that intuitive answer is wrong. And we can investigate this in a number of ways. So the first thing that we'll do is a sort of empirical investigation of this question. We will simulate coin flips. We will simulate taking averages uh, and uh, see that the average numbers for a moderately sized set of these experiments will really distinguish the heads tails case from the heads heads case. Then we'll use Markov chains to not be empirical about it, but rather to be exact and mathematical. Uh, Markov chains will allow us to figure out the exact value of what's called the expected value of the number of flips till we see heads tails and until we see heads heads. So that's what you have to look forward to if you stick around in this video, which I hope you will. All right, so let's get started. First, the computer portion. All righty. So here we have got a terminal. And in this terminal, we see some Python code. We see some functions here like coin flip, which do the expected thing, which 50% of the time it returns an H, which stands of course for heads, and 50% of the time it returns a T, which of course stands for tails. And then we have a variety of functions here, which will simulate the experiment that we uh, discussed in the previous part of the video, where we flip a coin until we see heads and tails. Uh, keeping track of the number. So this is a function which in particular will return for you the number of flips until you see uh, heads and then tails. We also have a function which will record the number of flips until we see heads and heads. Then we have functions here which will uh, do, do this experiment, you know, some number of times, n number of times. We have an input here, n and then take an average, right? So we can really see empirically whether or not these two numbers are the same or whether they're, they're different and perhaps even what their values are. So let's go ahead and import uh, from, I called this thing HT or HH, from HT or HH, uh, import star. I think that's how it works. And we can just go ahead and check now, coin flip this function and you can see that on this occasion it's outputted tails or T. T again, there's heads, T, H, H, etc. Okay, so that's the coin flip function. Then we can um, do, for example, flip until HT. Let's investigate HT first, okay? So we're gonna flip until HT 
And this is going to flip the coin, building up a string of H's and T's until we detect H then T. And we'll see that here. So you can see uh, we started out by flipping tails and tails in this line. Uh, and we keep flipping tails until we hit our heads. And we're waiting. And then we see, finally, after seven flips, this seven here, we see that we end in heads and tails. So this took seven flips until heads and tails. OK, let's do it again. This one took merely three flips. As expected, this is a random process, so we're not going to get the same number of flips every time. Five, four, five, two. Wow, we got lucky on this one, right? Um, eight. Wow, look at that. Eleven. Wow, look at that. Four, three. Anyway, you could imagine doing this over and over again, um, recording the numbers that we get out. Uh, but instead, I've written a function here, which is will do this experiment for us some number of times that we can specify. And it's called average until ht. Oops. And we can do this, let's say, a thousand times, all right? Uh, which, of course, would be extremely tedious to do with a real coin. Forget about it. But, you know, even, even with our Python program here, it's nice that we can do this um, uh, so quickly. So let's go ahead and see what we get. All right. So it looks like after a thousand of these experiments, the average number is 3.96. Let's see it. Let's do it again, okay? Because again, this is a random process. So we expect that we won't get exactly the same value out, but maybe something close. Maybe we can see a pattern. 3.894 this time. Okay. Oh, 4.072. 3.998. 3 3.953. 4.052. Are you seeing a pattern? 4.012. 3.953. Anyway, it's hard not to notice, isn't it? That these numbers are remarkably close to 4. And one might guess then that the expected value for this heads and tails process will be 4. 4 flips. Okay. Now let's play the same game, but for H, H. So we're going to now do this process averaging until H, H. All right. And let's see if there's any difference, noticeable difference, between the numbers that we just saw, which were hovering around four, and the numbers that we're going to see here. All right, here we go. Huh. 6.103. Well, maybe this is just a fluke. I mean, 6.103 6 is a pretty big number, but maybe we just got really unlucky. Oh, 6.107, 6.085, You can see that it appears that these numbers are hovering around the value 6, so that the expected value, which is some, in some sense the, the true measure, the true measure of the average number of flips until heads heads, that is, that has removed all of the vicissitudes of probability and such. You would expect then that the expected value, the expected number of flips till you see heads and heads is six. So we see a discrepancy. We see that the average number of flips until heads heads is in particular greater than the average number of flips until heads tails. And this is already a little bit counterintuitive, isn't it? So maybe take a moment, think about why this might be so. I, nothing up my sleeve. This is honest to goodness the way it is. This is the way reality works. So please, maybe take a moment and try to come up with some nice, concise argument for why we see this discrepancy. When I come back, we will run. I'll, I'll give you an explanation. And I think on the basis of that explanation, we will be able to write down some Markov chains and calculate these 
expected values precisely. Okay, so have you had a chance to think about it? Can, have you come up with a sort of concise reason as to why the average number of flips until heads heads is greater than the average number of flips till heads tails? So here's my concise reason, the one that I would try to use if, ex if I was explaining this to my enumerate uncle, for example. So w regardless of whether you are flipping until heads tails or flipping till heads heads, we can agree that the average number of flips till you hit your first heads will be the same in either case. This is obvious because, well, the coin does not know whether you're flipping until heads tails or heads heads. It just does its thing. The average number of flips till you see that first heads will be the same in either case. There's no difference, right? But what is different is the following. Let's say that you're going after heads and heads. You flip and flip and flip, and then you get your first heads and you get excited because you know that 50% of the time after flipping that first heads, 50% of the time you're free of this coin flipping tedium. Yeah, you're free of it. All you have to do is flip heads. So you flip that flip right after your first heads. You flip the flip right after the first heads. Now, 50% of the time, again, you're free. But 50% of the time, what happens? You fail. And what does failure look like? It looks like flipping a tails. Here is the key idea. That tails that you flip when you fail doesn't get you any closer to your goal of heads than heads. It's like you're having to start from square one, okay? Now, keep that kind of comment in mind. You have to start from square one. Let's contrast this with the heads than tails case. You flip till you hit your first heads. And on average, the, the number of flips till you see that first heads will be the same as the number of flips in that until you see your first heads in the heads heads experiment right that's obvious but now and on the flip after that first heads 50 percent of the time you are free because 50 percent of the times you will have flipped a tails remember we're in the heads tails case but 50 percent of the time you fail and what does failure look like now Failure looks like flipping a heads after that first heads, right? But you're not quite as sad as you were when you failed in the heads heads case. You're a little bit happier. Why? Because you did not lose all of your progress toward your goal of flipping heads tails. You've gotten that heads you have that heads right there and you know that on the next flip after your first failure you have a 50 percent chance of being home free what was your chance of being home free let's say on the next two flips after your first failure in the heads heads experiment well the probability of seeing heads than heads in two flips Exercise for the reader is one-fourth. You're not a reader, you're a viewer. Exercise for the viewer, one-fourth. Whereas after your failure in the heads-tails experiment, your probability of success on the next flip, right after, one-half. This is the key difference between the heads-tails situation and heads-head situation that causes the expected value of heads heads to be greater the number sorry let me let me be clearer it's the expected value of the number of flips until heads heads it's greater than the expected value of the number of flips until heads tails what we're going to do next 
is we're going to go to uh, the document camera here. We're going to explain this precisely. We're going to get those numbers six and four that we saw. We're going to do this using Markov chains, which are a really cool little gadget and probability theory. Now, if you stop the video here and you skedaddle, I understand. Um, but I think that it's very understandable. This stuff, although sometimes it might be considered advanced mathematics or something, it's really not that bad. So I hope that you'll stick around to see the explanation. But if not, I hope that what you can take away from this video is the reason why this unintuitive fact that the uh, average number of flips until heads tails sm is smaller than the average number of flips until heads heads. I hope that you'll come away from this video with a really concise reason as to why that is so. And maybe you can even exploit your uh, enumerate uncle by waging a bet against them. For example, you have the heads tail side, he has the heads head side. You Each of you flips your coin till you see your respective termination condition. Yours being, of course, heads tails, his being heads heads, and whoever whoever does it sooner wins the wins the pot. All right. So I hope that uh, you will exploit your enumerate uncle in this fashion. Okay. But please stick around if you want to see the exact reason why the expected value of until heads heads is six, six, and the expected value until heads tails is merely four. All right. It's coming up next. real quick i want to invite you to join a little experiment that i've been running for about a month now where i've been streaming on twitch trying to build a community there around the giving and getting of mathematical knowledge and expertise so if you are a math enthusiast or maybe you are just a student who's maybe confused about something going on in your classes in your math class like and it doesn't matter what level it could be you know elementary school high school college it really doesn't matter but if there's something that you are confused about or that maybe you're just curious about we have a group of uh, real smart people in the chat who are willing to help and of course I am willing to help now if I can't help you I'll let you know but if I can help you I'll do what I can so please if you're so inclined come on by the twitch channel and join us. We'd love to have you.